Hey there, how's it going everybody? In this video, we're going to be learning how to use the built-in VENV module from the standard library to work with virtual environments. Now, I've done a couple of videos on different ways to manage virtual environments. I have other videos on virtual ENV and PIP ENV, but this built-in VENV module is actually the one that I'm currently using most often, so I wanted to show how to do this. Also, my virtual ENV video is getting pretty old at this point, and when I made that video, I only showed how to use virtual ENV on Mac and Linux. This time around, I'm going to make videos for Windows and Mac and Linux. So for this video, we'll be learning how to use this on Windows, but if you're on Mac and Linux, then I'll be sure to leave a link to that video in the description section below. Okay, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first of all, why would we use a virtual environment? So the purpose of a virtual environment is to have a space where we can install packages that are specific to a certain project. So for example, let's say that you have a lot of Django sites that use Django version one, but you wanna start using Django version two on all of your newer projects. Well, if you're just using your single global environment, then when you update Django to version two, it could break some of your old projects that use Django version one. So we don't want all of our projects pointing to a single instance of Django. So each project should have its own packages separate from each other. And that's what we use virtual environments for. So with that said, let's look at how we can use the built-in VNV module to create virtual environments. Now, in order to use this module, you're gonna to need to use Python 3.3 or higher. I'm gonna be using Python 3.7, but anything over 3.3 should be good. Now, I have my command prompt here open on my desktop. Uh, so let's create a new environment to see what this looks like. And actually, I'm in my home folder here, so let me actually uh, CD to my desktop. Okay, so now I'm on the desktop, and now uh, let's see what it looks like to create a new virtual environment. Now, unlike virtual ENV or PIP ENV, you don't need to install anything to use this. It already comes with the standard library. Now, first, let me do a PIP list to show you the modules that I have installed with my system installation of Python. So if I say PIP list, then we can see a list of packages here. <clears throat> and these are all the packages that I have installed on my system installation of Python. So now let's create a new virtual environment. Uh, so to create a new virtual environment, I can simply say Python dash M V E N V. And now the name of our virtual environment. So I'm just going to call this project underscore E N V. So when you run dash M and then specify a module like we did here, uh, Python will search your sys.path and execute that module as the main module. So this V E N V module expects the environment name that you want to create, and then it will go out and create that for you. Uh, so uh, now we should have a new environment uh, called project underscore env. So if I list out everything on my desktop by using dir, then we can see that now we have this virtual environment called project underscore uh, env. So it creates that in our current directory. So to activate that, we can simply say, let me clear my screen here. To activate this, we can just say project underscore env, which was the name of my project, and then scripts, and then activate dot bat. So if I run that, then we can tell that our environment is activated because you'll likely see the environment name in parentheses here in our command line. Uh, another way that you can tell this is by typing where Python, spell that right, and when we run that, it gives us the paths to the current Python command and our virtual environment directory here is listed uh, at the top of that. Now the version of Python that it's going to use in the environment is going to be the same version of Python that you use to create the environment. So since I use Python 3.7 to create the environment, then this environment is also going to use Python 3.7. Now if you need to use a different version of Python, then you'll need to use something like VirtualNV instead. But honestly, I don't really have the need uh, much at all to do that anymore. So it's not really something I've even noticed. So now within this environment, now that we have this activated, let me do a pip list. So we can see that all we have installed within this environment is pip and setup tools. So now if you install some packages here, then they will only be installed for this environment. So let's say that our project requires uh, the request library and PyTZ. So to do that, I could simply say pip install requests. And once that is installed, then I can just hit the up arrow here 
and now do a pip install PyTZ and we'll install that. And then once this is installed, we will run pip list again. Okay, so first I'll clear my screen and now I'll do a pip list. So it installed all of those uh, packages within our virtual environment. Now, all of these other environment or packages here are just uh, dependencies of those other packages that we installed. Now, if you ever want to export the packages that you're using for a specific environment, the way that we can do this in Python is with a requirements.txt file. This will allow someone else to create an environment and use your requirements.txt file to install all of the same packages and dependencies that you're using. So to do that, we can use the pip freeze command. So I'm going to say pip freeze and that's going to be similar to pip list but it will give us the packages in the correct form for the requirements.txt file so you can take that output and uh, just put that output into a requirements.txt file so i'm going to create a requirements.txt file on my desktop and put the information from pip freeze inside of there now I could do a redirect of the output in my command prompt and create the file that way, but I ran into this weird uh, bug where it was changing the color of my prompt when I tried that. So I'm just gonna do this manually. So I'm going to uh, copy the output from this pip freeze here. And whoops, let me, looks like I accidentally pasted that. Let me do that one more time and just do a pip freeze. Okay, so just let me copy this here, and I'm going to create a new file on my desktop, and this is just going to be a text file. And this is going to be requirements.txt. I'll open that up in Sublime, and now I'm going to paste in the output uh, from pip freeze into that file. And now we uh, should have our requirements.txt file in our current directory with the same contents of as that pip freeze command. Okay, so now let's deactivate our environment. So I'm going to bring back up my command prompt here. And to deactivate your environment, it's as easy as saying deactivate. And when we run that, we can see that we no longer have the environment in our prompt. And if you want to delete the virtual environment altogether, so it's no longer active, uh, but it still exists. If we want to delete the environment altogether, it's as simply as deleting the directory for that environment. And on Windows, you can do this in the command line simply by saying rmdir, uh, and then the name of the directory that you want to delete. And then we're also going to do a forward slash s here uh, to tell it that uh, even if this isn't empty, we want to delete it. And actually, more specifically, that forward slash s uh, will also delete uh, the entire tree. So it'll delete subdirectories and things like that as well. Okay, so now that environment should be deleted. Now, if you're not comfortable with using the command line for stuff like this, then you can simply delete the directory by dragging it to the trash bin if you'd like to do that instead. Now, normally when I create a virtual environment, I usually create it inside of my project and I name the environment VENV. -E and that's a pretty common convention. Now, the reason that I called it something different before was because I wanted to differentiate between the VENV -E module and the name of the environment. But normally I would do something uh, like this. I would create a new project. So in this case, I'll just create a directory called my project. So mkdir my underscore project. And then I would create a virtual environment inside of that project called VENV. -E so I'll say Python dash M VENV -E to run this VENV -E module. And now the name of our environment. Now I want to put this inside of my project. So I'll say my project V E N V. And sometimes these virtual environments will uh, take a second to create. But now once that is created, okay, so that finished. So now to activate that, I'm simply going to say my underscore project V E N V, which is the name of the virtual environment scripts and then activate dot bat and this will activate that virtual environment like we saw before and now that environment is active now remember we created a requirements.txt file from our last environment now if we want to create a new environment and use a requirements.txt file to install our packages then we can do that by saying pip install dash r and now 
since we're using that dash R option, it's going to be expecting a requirements.txt file. So that is just located here on my desktop. So I'm just going to pass that in directly. So I'll say requirements.txt and I will run that and it's going to go out and install everything from that requirements.txt file and all of the dependencies that we had listed. So once all of these are installed, I'm going to let this finish here. Okay, clear my screen. So now if I do a pip list, then we should see the same installations that we made in our last environment. Okay, now uh, one other thing that I should mention is that it's common to put your virtual environment inside of your project folder, but you don't want to put any of your project files into the virtual environment. So let me show you what I mean by this. So first, I'm going to CD into my new project. So I'm going to say CD into my project. Now, when we create files and directories within our project, we would never put them inside of the VENV directory. So let's say that I create a simple script within this project. So I would just create it and put it in the root of this directory. So let me create a script within my project. So I'm going to minimize uh, the command line here. I'm going to open up my project, which is just on my desktop. And now I'm going to, uh, within my project here, just create a new file and this is just going to be script and instead of .txt I'll do script.py and say yes there. Okay so back within my command line here if I do a dir within my project then we can see that now we have script.py and then our virtual environment. So now we have a script but we didn't put anything in that virtual environment. The environment should be something that can be thrown away and rebuilt, so you don't want to put any of your project files in there. Now, another thing is that you shouldn't commit your virtual environment to source control. So if you ever look at a template git ignore file for Python projects, then they usually have virtual environments ignored, which means they won't be committed to source control. Uh, now, uh, what you would commit to source control would be something like your requirements.txt file, which lets people build their own environments to run your project, but there's no need to add the environment itself. Okay, so now let me deactivate this environment. So we'll just say deactivate like we saw before and clear my screen again. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is how to create an environment with access to the system packages. So if I do a pip list within our, uh, within our uh, system installation of Python, then these are the system packages that I have installed on my global version of Python. And we saw these earlier. So there is a way that we can create a virtual environment that has access to these. Now, I hardly ever do this. Uh, anytime I need packages that are installed globally, I usually just create a requirements.txt file instead. Uh, but there must be enough people who request this functionality that they made it possible. So let's go ahead and see how to do this. So first, I'm going to delete the environment that we just created. So to delete that, we saw this before, but I'll say rmdir, and that was called venv, and also the forward slash s to delete those subdirectories as well. Say yes, we are sure that we want to delete that. Okay, so now to create an environment that has access to those system packages, we can say python dash m venv, uh, which is the module name. The name of our environment is also going to be venv. And now we can add in this option here, uh, two forward slashes system dash site dash packages. And sorry, that's running on the next line there. I want this text to be large enough to where you all can see it, but sometimes it makes it a little uh, hard to read because it goes on multiple lines. But this is system dash site dash packages. So if I run that, then that is going to create that environment with our system packages. And once that is created, we can activate that by saying venv, which is the name of our environment, uh, scripts, and then activate, whoop, let me spell that right, activate.vat. So we can see that that environment is now active. And let me clear my screen here. If I do a pip list, whoops, let me spell that right, pip list, 
then we can see that all of those uh, system packages are also available inside of this virtual environment. Now the additional packages that we install in this environment still won't affect these systems packages. So let's see a package that we don't have here. So I don't have uh, SQL Alchemy in my global installation of Python. So let's install that. So I'll say pip install SQL Alchemy. And once that is installed, uh, then it's only going to be installed in our environment. Okay, so once that is installed, if I do a pip list, then we can see that now we have SQL Alchemy installed here. Um, but it's also possible to only list the packages that we've installed in this environment. So this is everything, including our uh, system packages. But if I only want what we've installed in this environment, then I could say pip list dash dash local. And when I do that, we can see that now we just have pip, setup tools, and SQL Alchemy. And just to show you that that didn't install in the uh, system packages, if I do a deactivate and then do a pip list, then we can see that SQL Alchemy did not get installed on our system packages for our global version of Python. So that's good. That's exactly what we wanted. Now that dash dash local command also works for pip freeze as well. So if you ran pip freeze dash dash local, then it would only give you the packages that you installed in that environment as well. Okay, so I think that is going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully now you have a pretty good idea for how you can use the built-in VENV module to create and manage your virtual environments. So this is personally what I've been using the most lately. It doesn't have as many bells and whistles as Virtual NV or PIP ENV, but I just find it really simple to use, and it's great for what I need 99% of the time. So if anyone has any questions about what we covered in this video, then feel free to ask in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer those. And if you enjoy these tutorials and would like to support them, then there are several ways you can do that. The easiest way is to simply like the video and give it a thumbs up, and also it's a huge help to share these videos with anyone who you think would find them useful. And if you have the means, you can contribute through Patreon, and there's a link to that in the description section below. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and thank you all for watching.